as we stayed on by. We hung our heads low as they raised their flags high. Then we grabbed our guns and shot away. Skilled brothers on Saturday. Blood spills out and the wounds were deep. Oh, Jesse James, well, he won't even day a peep. So then we go on down that road. Bring your backs and bring your soul. Bring your backs and bring your soul. Oh, said I died, forget all. Knees and I pray to the Lord that I can kill that fucker tonight. So then we go on down that road. Bring your backs and bring your souls. Bring your backs and bring your souls. I said I die before I get home. Motherfucker, don't give a goddamn. So then we go on down that road. Bring your backs and bring your soul. Bring your backs and bring your soul. I'm set a dime for get old. Long be gone for so long. Don't you come around? Very cool. Hello everyone on the YouTube, and thank you for joining us here tonight. My name is Oliver Halkowicz, and I am a first soloist with Houston Ballet. I am very excited to chat with the artists we have here tonight, celebrating this exciting collaboration between the Dead South and Houston Ballet. I have danced on many different stages in my, in my career, and over the last year, our stage has been a virtual one. And while I can bemoan how our lives here have been put on pause and how much we miss our audience and the give and take between performer and audience that can only be felt in a theater, the silver lining, or dare I say it, Stanton, a COVID blessing, is I sit here tonight in my little virtual square getting to talk to artists about a project that linked up a ballet company in Texas with a rock band from Saskatchewan. I think I said that right. Speaking of this band, I'm going to read a little something from their website because I think it's really good and uh, I want someone to write me an introduction like this one day. The Dead South, a gold rush vibing four-piece acoustic set from Saskatchewan, infused the genre's traditional trappings with an air of frontier recklessness, whiskey breakfast, and grizzled tin pan showmanship. Their sound, built on a top configuration of cello, mandolin, banjo, and guitar, speeds like a train past polite definitions of acoustic music 
into the grittier, rowdier spaces of the bluegrass world. What is a whiskey breakfast? I don't know, but I want it. Okay. <laughs> um, so Stanton Welch, the artistic director of Houston Ballet, has created 11 episodes of dance to the Dead South album, In Good Company. And while we all filmed individually, David Rivera, the cinematographer and editor of this project, and the hardest working man in film, sorry, Oscars, has created a sense of community that interweaves these stories together. All right, I'm gonna introduce everyone now. So first, we've got Nate Hiltz with his gnarled baritone, and I'm taking that verbatim from the website. <laughs> I don't know what gnarled means, but I like it. Hi, Nate. Hey, how you doing? Next, we have Colton Crawford on not the gnarled banjo, I imagine, a, a very <laughs> fresh banjo. A little gnarled. Okay, we have principal dancer and my very good friend, Melody Minetti, also a talented musician and songstress in her own right. Mel, hi. Hello, hello. And last, but definitely not least, we have the artistic director of Houston Ballet, Stanton Welch, who dreamed up this collaboration, choreographing and directing the 11 short films set to the music of the Dead South. Hi, Stanton. Hello. All right, Stanton. Yes. Kick off. How did how did we get here? How did you how did you hear about the Dead South and and how did this all come to be? Well, I'd actually come across uh, the album uh, several years before COVID and had started mm -hmm. listening to it. And I, when I find music that I like, I start collecting different albums. And uh, it was just such a strong piece all by itself. I felt like it would make a ballet. And I didn't have it necessarily on a project. I had pitched it to a couple of companies, um, but then COVID hit uh, and it hadn't gone anywhere from there. And it just... Uh, it felt like it was such, uh, it felt, it inspired me. I personally was struggling with uh, finding a creation niche again after a uh, personal tragedy in my life. But uh, this really spoke to me because it wasn't just love. It wasn't, we will survive. It was a little gritty and dark. And I felt more like that, like that was more of a, what connected to me. And then that had a sense of build and a sense of community. And, and it really felt like it was the right project for now. And thankfully everybody was so interested in making it work. And uh, that's how it began. And so we, we started um, with uh, Dead South. We started uh, last fall with the song Black Lung. And we, well, we all ended up in a field dancing together. We were socially distanced, but we were dancing together and we, we felt like ourselves again after this period of being home kind of lost. Um, so, uh, so to the band members, how did this discussion begin with you? How, how did you hear about Houston Ballet? <laughs> <clears throat> Unless you know about Houston Ballet, which I hope. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, it was quite a surprise to us. Our manager, Chris, sent us a message just saying that, uh, you know, the Houston Ballet would like to do some work with your guys' music. And we didn't really understand what that meant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he just kind of went into detail and said that these guys would like to do dances to your album, Good Company. And, and then they started with Black Lung, which was also really cool. And, and we were just blown away with that first video of Black Lung. Uh, we were just so excited. Yeah. yeah it was really cool. a video called Restoration that was a big hit and so much fun for us. And we've been like, we've all been humming your music ever since. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you guys have had to listen to that a little too many times. But yeah. yeah. Probably Stanton more than us. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so the, your album In Good Company came out in 2014, right? <clears throat> So what, what was the impetus for the album? Um, what, what was it, where were you? What was it kind of, what did it mean to you? And um, what do you think about it now, seeing it kind of in a new light? Well, uh, we did this all in Regina, Saskatchewan at a little place called Soul Sound Studios uh, with our buddy Orion. 
and uh, it was basically there was no theme really for the album. We had previously recorded a, an EP just months before this one, and then we had a bunch more songs to to go. So then we put them on Good Company, and it was our first real piece of work, and we were really really pumped about it. Um, listening back, it's it's hard sometimes, that's for sure, because it's it was a long time ago, and you know we were just kind of getting to know ourselves and our instruments and what we were doing. But uh, it's also a lot of fun to listen to. I don't know if you have anything to add, Colton. But. Yeah, it was like, it was just brand, that was kind of us right at the very, very start of the band. Like we had only been a band for probably less than a year. We started in 2012, so maybe a year and a half when Good Company came out. But like Nate and I started jamming together in 2012. We wrote that first batch of songs and we didn't, yeah, like Nate said, we didn't know how to play the instruments. We didn't know how to write songs. Like it was all just, we were learning everything just on the fly. And it's really, really cool to see uh, where it's gone since then. But yeah, like Nate said, it can be kind of cringy listening back to some of the, just some of the songwriting, some of my banjo playing is pretty rough. And like, yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of magic to it because it's rough and raw and, we were just kind of pouring out whatever we could, but uh, I think we're better now. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by you learned how to play the instruments? Like you weren't, how did, how did you start playing music? Uh, I started with piano when I was young and guitar. And uh, when I started jamming with Nate, I had just, just gotten a banjo. Uh, so I was just kind of going on YouTube and buying books and, teaching myself how to play it. And Nate was kind of pretty early with the guitar still, I think. Uh, Scott had never played a mandolin. Danny was the most, uh, he was the most, um, like, well-versed when we started the band. He had a good good command of the cello. But other than that, yeah, we were just, hey, this sounds kind of cool. Like, this is, a, I'm playing this on the third fret. Like, what fret are you on, kind of? Yeah, like, just learning the chords and, yeah, so. Yeah, and even Danny on the cello, he had to re kind of learn how to play it because he's not sitting down playing classically. He's now playing it more like a bass and then learning to bow standing up. And yeah, no, I, I had learned to play guitar when I was young, but I just was never really good at it or put a lot of attention into it. So when we were when we started this, it was it was bad. And we'd go to open mics and I would sing probably like three feet off the mic because I was I was so scared. Uh yeah, it was so it's been a journey, that's for sure. So um, Stanton, so you guys don't, you don't see it as like a one long narrative work, right? The the album, you just kind of put these tracks together? Pretty much, yeah. What, Stanton, what about you as, as making a dance to this album? Did you, did you see it as kind of a narrative, like a, a long narrative or? Yeah, I think when you listen to an album, there's an, there's sort of a narrative in it, whether you create it yourself, like you when you watch a ballet or you see a piece of art, you might make it yourself. But I think whenever I hear an album, somehow I, I think the guys have struggled in putting it in an order and I believe the musicians like the order that they've put it in. I'm assuming, I'm not sure if that's actually how it happens, but that's what's in my head. So I always think there's a validity to that. So. Um, but, you know, in starting, because it was COVID, I wasn't sure if we would do more than three or four. I wasn't sure how it would work. And then every time I'd have a new dancer, you'd all been bottled up with nowhere to dance for so long. You just danced. And I suddenly was going into the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh track. It was like, you have to stop. I have to stop because we won't have time to go back and film what we've made. And that so that that was part of the inspiration but i think you know having a complete album is always a super interesting thing you know and and also also i mean eventually creating a new work with uh music that is written and and danced together at the same time i think that could be super interesting i remember we would have zoom meetings it would be we were doing three pieces from the dead south and then the next meeting would be we're doing four and it would just keep growing and then it became <laughs> 11. <laughs> And I think part of what I felt in love with it was that how you guys were describing it, it's like corroboree, I don't know of a Canadian or American word for that, but like a folk dance where people have just come together with friends and dancers and 
musicians and singers and and you're going to play the music together for the community that's what it felt like to me that's why i thought it was so fitting for what we were experiencing in COVID. and in i think it's in hell video there's quite a bit of dancing like there's a rhythm to the movement the whole time and that really stuck in my head as a i think these guys danced a little bit in that yeah i mean i i went on a deep dive on all your music videos and you guys are dancers. I mean, yeah. the, inhale, in the, the inhale video, definitely. The bop <laughs> is really good. Yeah, very musical. <laughs> Did you realize you're making good dance music? <laughs> Not a clue. Yeah. <laughs> happy we did. Happy we are, though. I mean, a big fan of dancing. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, but I, the song, the recap. I want to go. I want to go to a club and dance. I love that song. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so it, has, it has all these ebbs and flows. So you slow down and then you start, you start yeah. dancing again. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Maybe they'll start playing at clubs now. <laughs> um, Mel. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, this has been a bizarre time for us to be a dancer and how we're working now. So talk to me about kind of the process of, of your rehearsing with Stanton to filming to waiting to see it come out like what what was that all like yeah well you know we switched to as you know <laughs> Stanton the choreographer <laughs> Oliver my coworker. we switched to digital and so we started doing that while we were in lockdown and dancing in our homes and dancing in our yards and stuff like that so this project I think I'm saying this right. Yeah, this project was the first time that we actually saw each other, you know, in person again at all and got into the studio to do choreography again. And it was sort of like, I don't know, there was a moment of like, do I still remember how to do this? <laughs> you know, like, am I still going to be able to like, you know, when, when I walked into that studio with Stanton for, I can't remember, I don't think we did the recap first. Honestly, it's like such a blur. I don't remember which one we did first, but I, there, I will talk about the recap because that's the one where I I do a couple solos, and that was the one where I walked in and I was like waiting for the material, and then it was just sort of like, okay, body, <laughs> like, like, are you gonna remember that when he puts the music on? So it was, it was a little like rusty, you know, getting it going again. But the music, I mean, you guys. Whew. It's so good. It's like it, we we've been dancing in our home, but that music made me want to dance in my home, mm -hmm. you know, and like blast it in the in the kitchen and like go over my choreography. It's good. It's music that I would listen to, anyways. Um, so that was that's always also really fun to kind of have something you can really feel deeply. And I I appreciate I appreciate you know Oliver. You said coming out of this wacky time where we're just like all closed off in these homes and walls and um, and it's hard. And so this music kind of like pulls that up. And so it's like, we don't, it wouldn't have felt as fitting to come back into a choreography and be like, no, we're just dancing and we're flitting and we're, you know, like some, some pieces we do are like that, that would have felt so put on to me. Um, and it felt really nice to be able to like get down in the dirt, you know, with this music and like be like, ah, oh, a little bit. I don't have words, I only have sounds. <laughs> but um, it felt really good and, and really fitting to get to to do this. And I, I mean, I've, I've loved it. I wish we could keep, usually we get to sit longer with stuff, you know, we would be dancing this piece for months in the studio and then we would get to go and like get it on stage and, and share it with an audience and so i do kind of miss that so i'm looking forward to some future about that because i think it's it really impactful the, the combo of your guys's music and and us dancing <laughs> the, the hard part or at least for me especially not not having to constantly remember choreography for a year is we would we would be with Stanton and we'd have a few rehearsals where we'd make up. One, movie. one rehearsal. One I saw each of you once for two hours and, and never then, again until I filmed you here. Yeah. And, and never again would be like two months. So you would have to- Six have months to, for some, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to keep that, you know? So it, it meant that we were listening to the music all the time because you had to keep it in your body and remember 
what the you know impetus and the motivation was and that's not how we ever work i mean we work rehearsing something you learn it and you work for six weeks on something so that's mm -hmm. And we had with, I think with Honey You, that there's an enormous amount of emotional content in that lyric for me that I don't know if it's just how I feel or how it, but I can't hear that and not feel. Uh, and it's also so fitting for, for where we all are and, and, and survival and feeling hope, like there's the sound of hope. And I think that that was what, as an audience, we needed. And then when we had the Dead South project, restoration was a separate little uh, thing of its own, but that also had that sense of, you know, we will be back, we will survive, we will, we will be, we'll be here, we'll be dancing and singing. <laughs> Honey, you, I, I had the same experience with that song. Oh my gosh. Uh, I had a 17 year old son and we had to learn the lyrics. And first of all, Nate, you're like, rhythmic like way of singing was really hard to learn. I was like, how is he like singing in this rhythm? That's like, it was really cool, but it's very unique. And I, was, I struggled <laughs> to sing like you. Um, but I was in the kitchen learning the lyrics because we had to learn the lyrics. And so there's already this emotion. And then, then I'm like reading what you're actually like singing and trying to sing along. And it's just like mm -hmm. <laughs> some singing and crying. And my son is like, oh my God. Like, he's like, oh, come on, mom. <laughs> I can't watch it and not cry. And I've watched, I've listened and watched it way too many times. It's, it's, yeah, it's the spoken <laughs> word and the, the single instrument. Beautiful. And we, we all tried to become you, Nate, because we were, you know, Sam asked <laughs> us to mouth the words. And when we were in the Black Box, <laughs> Black Box Theater filming it, we all sang. Um, but I tend to sing more like a Broadway star than <laughs> than you, so it was it was fun to kind of inhabit. Um. But then you also had an interesting moment where everyone just acted still to camera, just to is it the violin? What no? What is the instrument that does Cello. the solo? Cello, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just the the depth of that because we we've missed that sound. We deal with strings and uh, it was so it's a very passionate moment too yeah Sorry. Do, uh, colton nate do you guys listen to any uh classical music not as much as i should i like tchaikovsky a lot i like uh nutcracker suite and uh, good sweet. answer <laughs> that's a plug the opening for december and november <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh i like i like a lot of tchaikovsky and then um that's kind of really the only the only guy that I listen to somewhat regularly for classical music, probably. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to agree with that. And I also just tend to put on classical music playlists a lot when doing stuff around the house throughout the day. Sometimes I miss who it was, so I, I that kind of pisses me off. But because uh, there's, it's just it's so beautiful. And like just watching you guys dance to our music, um, I'm not too familiar with ballets. I've seen very few portions of a ballet movement ever so i always picture it being the like classical music so then to see you guys dance to something like our music it was it was it was incredible it, it gave me a whole new perspective on 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 how to dance well not, not like i'm gonna dance like that but uh, you know, <laughs> just like a whole new appreciation for it too because i already thought it was great and just seeing how different it can be and seeing the emotion you guys put into stuff is is just incredible yeah, it's really cool. It's, uh, it's something that I'm very like, yeah, un, uh, I'm like ballet illiterate. Like, you guys should get Colton to dance one time, actually. He's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but we need a show all together, then you, everyone can dance together. Who, who's the best dancer in the band? Definitely Nate. Oh, yeah. Nate's a good dancer. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so, Stanton, are you. Um, you know, I, I think when whenever you make a dance, you don't know, you think it's going to end up one way, you start that way, and it kind of always ends up a little bit a different way. Do you, how did this, um, how did this well, for you? I mean, this is, you have an editor that's kind of between you now, right? You have to yeah, and it, this had many starts. So it had in my brain in the beginning, then it had COVID time, and, 
And then, you know, that's a collaboration with the editing and the cinematography and everything. It's not just choreography. It's a very different experience. But I do think it would be a great piece to perform live. I think that there's a, a lot of uh, life and future in the work. It would just be different from how it is currently. It wouldn't be necessarily solos or that individual. But there's a real life in that work. And I, I really do think uh, musically, because of... Uh, that we could make something really cool together eventually and, and, and make something unique that is really a collaboration between the two. I think that's, that's amazing. It's really I exciting. Wanna, I want to have a dance off with Nate. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> you guys have to listen to uh, Melody sing. She has quite a voice. Yeah. I'd love to. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can go on YouTube and type in Houston Ballet Christmas Special and... Oh, no, that's not on YouTube. Sorry. Take it back. <laughs> I, did, I did sing for, for our Christmas special. Yeah. Yeah, my... Um, it's funny. I'm like the odd one out in my family because my, my family are musicians. So my dad and my mom always were like... My mom would sing at weddings on the weekends and my dad was in a band and it was always music for family events, for every, every day, music in our house. And so I was the only dancer. <laughs> so they would, I'd be like, I did this thing. And they're like, what? <laughs> but, but yeah, it's very dear and close to my heart. And I still, I still always have to play music. It's just like, I don't Well, know. music is dance is oxygen, right? Like, what mm -hmm. do we do without the sound? We are a part of deux between sound music and ourselves we don't function without you we 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 don't we're inspired by that that that's what makes our bodies move it's a true uh, for the most part that's how it starts i mean i know there are there are people who start another way or choreographers who start another way but you know it, it happens a lot of the time that you listen to the music and that's what inspires you to to create something I can't imagine another way. I, I think that that's why music is such an emotional thing. When you're when you you use it to lift you up, you can use it to make you resilient. You can use it to depress you. But music is such a powerful thing. And I think in dancers and musicians, of course, but in our bodies, it's what makes us want to dance and want to move. Everything we think about has sound effect. We have a soundtrack to our lives, in our, in our head. So. It's a very tight relationship. Stanton, what have you been, over the last year, what have you been listening to besides The Dead South? <laughs> <laughs> what <do you> mean? <laughs> Only The Dead South. <laughs> that just finished like two weeks ago. I don't even know, four weeks ago. And now it's the Mozart that we're doing at the MFA. So luckily I know that off by heart. I knew it before. I didn't have to learn it. Um, so that that's not as a restrictive. And Play, which is Moby's music, which we have done back in the 90s or early 2000s, so that's an old piece too. You said a little bit that you, you've you had a little bit of a struggle with creating or, you know, it's it's a tough time to figure out how to be a creator yeah. right now with, yeah. the, with all the, you know, things that you have to do. I mean, how did this kind of, did this feel like it was easy? Yeah, it felt right. Like it felt it felt right and that's right from restoration through to this and then the reaction of the dance is the fact that we weren't in point shoes that the movement had a naturalness to it that we could sort of be ballet dancers but be people too and that that's what we were dealing with and uh i think that all the songs collectively have a sense of spirit and i think the last song ballad is very about connection and community and the fact that we are this organism of connected things and that's how we are live performers i mean as great as all this is the recordings it's different when you're watching the band sing it's different when you're watching the dancers dance live we have to get back to that that feeds us so much so yeah i don't know if i answered that or if i diverted off yeah, to we i think we've discovered this year that ballet dancers are people right you know we've always kind of been <laughs> this sort of uh, well, don't you thing. think yeah, I think that, they we're involved in this, you know, scenario with everyone, and it's um, we've become, and that's why it was important not to force film into ballet because right. ballet and film aren't like that. You had to make dance for film, and I think that that was what was our 
choice as a company and why we created that we made things that worked for film followed the camera the camera work was all a portion of it we spent the year creating just in a different universe so uh colton and nate i know we talked a little bit last week that you you guys get together over beer and make music which you can't do now so so what's going on how how are you guys making music and is, is it hard for you it's definitely harder. It's a lot slower. We've been uh, at the start of the, the COVID, we all got some like home uh, recording equipment. We got Pro Tools and like some mics and preamps and things. And we've been slowly trying to uh, put some things together, but it is it is way more difficult than when we can just get together with a case of beer and just go. Because the way that we the way that we write songs, like every now and again, Nate or Scott will come with a song that's kind of fully like fully formed start to finish. And then we're just, the rest of us are just adding pieces onto it. But most of the songs start with like one person will have a little idea, whether it's a little chord progression or I'll have a little banjo riff or Daniel have a cello part. And then we just sit there and we just start, we just start going. We try this, we try that. We have a few beers, we have some laughs and we just kind of, we like explore where it's going to go rather than having it kind of complete start to finish. Um, so not being able to do that, like not having that part is making it really difficult to kind of collaborate and, and be creative together. So it's been a challenge for sure. Yeah. And it's not just as easy as, uh, I don't know, sitting there and then going with an idea. You have to sit down, you have to turn on all of your equipment. You have to understand how to use pro tools. You have to learn that process too. So it's not smooth like it, it used to be. So we're just kind of learning how to get better at it. And then the better we and quicker we get at Pro Tools, the, the faster this stuff is coming. But yeah, it's it's also hard to motivate yourself. It's not like someone's sitting down and inspiring you. You have to find it yourself that day to you know sit down and try something. And then you get a phone recording from someone and they're like, hey, check this out, which is usually me saying to these guys, just annoying them. And they're like, yeah, that's great, Nate. Good, Good for you. You know, we'll put it on the shelf and, you know, we'll get to that later. <laughs> I'll keep that my voice memo and listen to it later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, yeah, it's, it's true. It's hard to like, uh, it's just so much of like the music we make is just from us just bouncing things off of each other. And yeah, we just, we really don't have that right now. So it is tough to, like, even if Nate, Nate sends me a song and I think, oh man, it'd be really cool if, you know, what if we added this rhythm in this part here? When I'm when I'm sitting in front of Nate and I have my banjo and he's got his guitar, I can explain what I mean very easily. But if I have to text it to him or or phone call, like, hey, at you know the one minute twenty three mark, uh, right after the second verse, what if you played this chord for three hits instead? Of, you know, it's just like, okay, I think I kind of know what you mean. Let me record it and send it back to you, and then you hear it. Oh no, that's not exactly what I meant. And you know, it's just, it's a way less smooth and fun process than it, than it normally is. It's tricky. What is, uh, what is writing like now? Is it all depressing and about being alone or what? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that what every song is going to be about that comes out you know, in the next no. year? <laughs> Well, I mean, we already write sad, depressing music and then just try to put a happy twist on a lot of times. So, yeah, nothing's changed too much. <laughs> That's what made me happy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so we've been trying some different stuff. I, I've been working on a few songs here. I don't know if Dead South would do anything with it or not, if we just throw it away. But it's uh, one of the first times really writing without really having, you know, the boy is really telling me, you know, I like this. I like that. I don't like that. Let's try this. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a f fun experiment, just a little different. Do you have a favorite song writer? Sorry. <laughs> In general? Yeah. Oh, I have a few, but like one of my, it really depends what kind of music we're listening to. I mean, uh, words wise, I would say Roger right. Miller. I love the way that Roger Miller can play with his words. But he's also, uh, he, he's got, you know, happy songs. He's got dark songs. But I used to be very deeply into the Doors and Jim Morrison when I was young. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, you know, the Misfits and stuff like that. So 
I'm all over the place. Meatloaf, Neil Diamond, like <laughs> forever. <laughs> the Hollies. I really got into the Hollies for a long while too. Yeah. What do you, when I've been trying to describe your music, and that's what I love about it, it's hard to kind of put a, a genre around it. What do you, what do you, besides that fantastic, whoever wrote your introduction, whoever that your company manager or whatever is really good. Um, but what, what do you consider yourself? I mean, do you consider yourself bluegrass, rock? Like what, what, what do you call that? Yeah, that's a tough thing. We've been struggling with that for the last eight years um, because we don't really fit anywhere. You, you know, know, we, we stem, stem from a little bit of bluegrass, a little bit of rock, a little bit of punk, a little bit of classical, like whatever, whatever we feel, we just kind of throw it in. It's kind of got like a Western old timey vibe, but then a little bit more aggression than usual. I mean, no one wants to claim us and we have nowhere to really be. So we're just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I often describe you as folk music because I feel that that sort of encompasses, but I don't know what folk music means in musical <laughs> terms. I guess in some places folk would be a, a like a a revolt against the the government. In some place, if you go to like Czech Republic, they used to listen to folk and country in the forest. Was, that wasn't their country's music, and they weren't really allowed to listen to it. So it was like a, a, a way to rebel. rebellion. Yeah. yeah, like it's like music of its time. Yeah. So how how is the response been to your music in the states? Where because you you guys are from Canada, are you is is are you touring a lot in the states? And how's that going? And yeah, we tour else? quite a bit. Going to Europe yeah. and when you could. I'd say we we basically share a time between the states, Europe, and the UK. And then we'll try and sneak in Canada here and there. It's kind of <clears throat> so, for example, this COVID's destroyed this part of the tour, but the next part that's supposed to start up is September, and that's supposed to be in the States. And then we're supposed to go to Europe and then back to the States, and then I think back to Europe again. So that just gives an example of what our touring schedules are like usually. This is just all over the place, yeah. I have, I have a um, good friend who's a ballet dancer and her father is a big fan of yours. And um, he wanted to know, what does the Dead South mean? <laughs> what? You know, that's funny. We get that I question like, I, a lot. I didn't even think about that, but that's a good question. Yeah. And a lot of people ask us that. And, you know, there's no real good answer, <laughs> which we probably should just come up with one solid I it up. answer for this. It does have a meaning. The Dead South? It's a sailor's term, isn't it? The Dead South? See now, there you go. So that's how we're going to we're going to leave it up to everyone's interpretation because that's yeah. be better. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to know. It's it's uh, whatever you want it to be. Yeah, it's an ominous mystery. And Natalie's father, you don't get to know. You. <laughs> it's yeah. well, uh, we'll send you a postcard with the meaning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mel, you left us for a little bit. I know. I'm sorry. I We're having a tornado in Houston, apparently. Sorry. Some kind of weather event. Well, but that, that's what we do here. So we're all right. Yeah. My <laughs> internet is its own event. <laughs> so I'm back, though. What I miss. <laughs> Talking about the boys. Um, Melody, how is, how is life going as a ballet dancer right now? <laughs> That's the last question. Are you feeling? Uh, you feeling in shape and ready to, ready to go? Um, it's like getting there. I, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you don't start your long time, <laughs> and then you're kind of like, well, I don't remember that being like that. <laughs> That's like a little bit how I feel right now. No, we're, I think we're getting back into the swing of things. Um, I feel excited to be like looking forward to shows and performances and doing more and more getting back to normal. I feel like not scared of my point shoes. Um, so that's really good. I think that there is, it's the longest I've ever not been on point. And cool. so, yeah, that was, that was the thing that I was the most unsure about, like what, 
what's going to happen. Uh, so just to how- describe that, Mel, it's your toes, nails falling off, it's bruising, it's all the chafing under their armpits. It's full on bruising and brutality to their feet and their bodies when they get partnered. That's what they have to now readdress, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's a lot. It's it's rough on the body. And so yeah. I I I feel more comfortable now with the like aspect of point again. And I, I was wasn't sure how that was gonna go. I did go up a size in point shoes. Um which is <laughs> really strange. Um, but apparently a lot of the women in the company did because our feet just like I don't know, I was walking around barefoot. Yeah, your feet are probably normalizing actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Normal people feet. <laughs> um, in, in our co, we have these cohorts that we take class with to keep the class size small. And um, Jacqueline, I keep taking pictures of her toes because they're so bloody. And I've never been, you know, I've been around ballerinas' feet all my life. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I, I feel like I'm watching Black Swan the movie where I'm yeah. like looking <laughs> at this, you know, gratuitous. <laughs> horror and i'm like wow yeah so it, it must be, it must be a, a new it's the same as an instrument when you play don't your fingers bleed if you don't pluck or don't not so much for us and like you can bleed you can cut your especially like colton if he's claw hammering he could i could see him cutting himself one one of the worst ones i've seen is our cello players um with when they don't play for a while and then they get back into it they get huge calluses like blood calluses yeah. right on the tip of their finger which makes it very hard for them to play. So then they'll tape it and then it'll pop while they're playing and stuff. And then it's very <laughs> painful for them. Yeah. When you guys are making uh, these music videos that I've watched and you're kind of in all these different locations sort of around, it looks like you've just plopped there and start playing music. Is that a real thing? Are you, uh, do you when you're making the video, do you just uh, set up shop and start playing music? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we just <laughs> find a spot and just go. <laughs> Do you always play um, standing up? Yeah, I guess we so. started sitting, and um, then three of us decided to start standing, and then that's when Danny had to learn how to learn to stand up and play. How uh, how raucous are your concerts? They're pretty raucous. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially in Montreal, they are extremely raucous in Montreal. What, what is the craziest crowd? Is it is are the Canadians? <laughs> Montreal, probably. I think our wildest shows have been in Montreal. Yeah, yeah some good. We, we toured Montreal a few times. It's a great ballet city too. And but they had a riot after the soccer match, and they had won the night. Do you remember before we performed, guys? We were there. It was it was intense. <laughs> what that's like for you guys so like what does a crazy crowd look like from your perspective <laughs> like what are you what are you watching it when that's happening in montreal well, um, one, yeah sorry go ahead colton the, the one nate and i are probably thinking about the same one it looked like the floor was almost like like it was kind of jelly and you just saw all these bodies just kind of like they were in like a wave pool and they're just going up and down and just going absolutely bananas just a bunch of people stuffed into a you know like the standing room there and yeah it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool experience for sure yeah and, and that that show also had a really big mosh pit that yeah. one too. and they had, they've had mosh pits twice like every once in a while we get a good a little mosh pit going but that was a big one that was, that was yeah. <laughs> there ever a point where you start to get worried that, <laughs> that things are going a little too far only when people start fighting and i can see it <laughs> that's when it really pisses me off because it's like it's bothering the people that are trying to watch and then we catch our eyes to it so then it's very distracting for us and then a couple of times i've stopped and kind of called people out for fighting we don't ever have to do that <laughs> <laughs> There was. Nutcracker, a nutcracker, I bet there's done. there's fighting at the Nutcracker. We've had oh, it's, 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 it's in the it's, it's in the gift shop though. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was one time. God, I mean, it's just not comparable. But I think it was Marie 
there was one time where there was a parade. Was oh, it maybe it was Pride or something? So, it that's was when parade was going on outside. And so, like, some people came in, you know, off the parade and were like, yeah, I'm going to go see a show. And they were already, like, really having a good time. And so, they, uh, I think it was in the part where there's, a, like, a party scene. I mean, it's like we're all at a table and food and, like, getting really rowdy. And I, I can't really remember, but I kind of feel like one of the people in the audience was like, yeah! Ah, like just like having a great time and that was unusual i thought it was really fun but i think they got kicked out <laughs> <laughs> they, did, they didn't get kicked out we just told at the last act could you uh please refrain refrain from screaming <laughs> from screaming because you're about to get murdered the story of maria you've just gone to prison it's not really something you want to cheer when the guillotine comes down right. and cheer when the child gets dragged off it just wasn't working for the rest of the audience they weren't Right. It she was, was really loving it. It was kind of appropriate the moment they did it, though, because it was like the party scene. But M yeah. maybe the one you remember for us in the audience, not so much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are occasional Friday nights at the Wortham Theater that can be a little rowdy because people have had extra drinks. Yeah, but we've never had a mosh pit. No. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Yes. Oh, we can work on that. We can work on that. Let's get that. Let's get the, let's get the show. Yeah. yeah. So is, is there a is there a day where um stanton we get to do this with the dead south in real life i'd love that yeah we've talked we're, we're, we're trying to sort ourselves out get back to touring get back to scheduling but yeah we're in we're in future discussions um, right guys <laughs> that, that, looking forward to that <laughs> so fun stanton what do you um are you i'm sure you're just as a director, you're just itching to to get back to you know what you do, you know, putting these these years together, these seasons together. So, do you think what do you think is going to be the big kind of will there be a change in how things look in the years to come? Do you think there is a takeaway from from this? A season? COVID blessing. Yeah, a COVID blessing. Yeah, the the COVID blessings are the connections that we've all learned to have through Zoom. And I think the fact that we've gotten to show our company uh, in a much broader, more international way than we have in the past through things being free on YouTube is enormous. It's enormous. And I think that I'd love to make dance film. I didn't think it would happen the way it did and in the order and the speed. But, uh, you know, I feel proud of the company and, and certainly proud of the work that we've made. And I think it can have its life and it should become a live thing and uh, keep evolving and and, uh, and growing like that. But, yeah. Yeah, I, think I don't think there's a big change in what you'll see on stage when we come back. I hope that we're back. Mm -hmm. That's why we're starting now and why we've been going the whole time. But it's been, I mean, for me, it's been super cool to... We're, we're rehearsing in a museum and we're dancing in a big field and we're so used to our studio and then the stage that this is kind of just i think opened us all up as as people once again definitely as people but it's also for me the problem is we have an hour a day and we're used to six hour rehearsal non-stop with class before you know that that stretch of detail work that you can do. And and no matter how much we tried to get everybody to be together, we could not get you to be together without you being together. And everyone to me looked right musically when I had you individually, but once you put it on film, like, oh, everyone is microscopically different and this is driving me crazy. But uh, it was something about we need, we need to be together and that would be fun, to make it a full corroboree piece, a full dance piece, full company on stage band in the middle going well that would be me like music too right like can you imagine just having like a click track but then just from there you have to play the whole track and nobody gets to adjust it like in you're all in separate places i don't know i think it's like when we're all together we catch each other's rhythm um for sure we do it with dancing but i i'm sure i'm sure it's the same with music yeah it's, exa it's exactly the same yeah yeah. It's hard to record too, like doing these isolated recordings just because we we groove off of each other so much, you know, and just being in the same room with each other. Like, like I know exactly when Nate's going to 
Like if there's a big pause, I know exactly when he's going to come back in. There's no click or anything. It's just from doing it, you know, 3000 times. I just know Nate's body language and exactly how he's going to kick back in. It's the same thing for all of us. We're all reading each other in that way the whole time. How much do you guys improvise when you're, when you're playing? I mean, if you play, you know, your, your song in hell, are you playing that the same way every night? Or you, are you just kind of feel how it is and that's, and that someone takes it away? We pretty much play it the same each night. Yeah. That's what I love about it. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like for most parts of the songs are played the same. Um, we started developing little interludes in between songs that just kind of naturally started happening from playing shows all the time just to kind of segue if i'm ready and everyone's tuning i'll just start playing something and then they usually kick in and then we'll give it the big draw and then start into the next song so we started doing that a little bit and i'm uh, like if i'm playing the mandolin and there's a little mandolin part i usually play it differently because i'm not very good at the mandolin i just i just do whatever i want <laughs> Colton, do you sing as well no no. no, I fake it. I fake sing. He does. He fakes <laughs> things all the time. Yeah. Does that mean you move your mouth, but no sound comes out? I mean, you go, yeah. like, yeah. Maybe I'll whisper into the mic a little bit. Who's <laughs> <laughs> the band member who does the whistling? <coughs> who does What's the that? whistling? Danny. Danny. <clears throat> Incredible. Yeah. That's good. Good whistling. So... I think about like Oliver's house, but pre COVID has historically been like a hub for a dance party. <laughs> um, yeah. It's and so, but it, downstairs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I think about like, so that, okay. So we just said we have to do it the same every time we're on stage too. Right. But then there's this aspect of dance that comes off the stage where we're, dancing freely and so for you guys once you're a band the reason i'm saying that is because like yeah we're in the studio and we're doing choreography and we're doing all this for hours but then sometimes on the weekend it's like you just want to be like ah <laughs> and so as a band do you guys still do that where maybe when you're creating or you carry out beyond writing a song do you just have like jam sessions or parties where you're just like ah oh, listen to how sweet this sounds and then <laughs> you know colton comes in and he's just like do you still do that or is it more regimented because you're a band now? Uh, we did it a lot more in the early days, for sure, when we weren't playing all the time. Uh, and when we all lived in the same city and then obviously, you know, pre-COVID, yeah, we would get together and just just play songs and just kind of see what happened. Um, that hasn't happened in quite a long time, though. It feels like forever since we've done that. Mm -hmm. Really has. Do you guys have an Oliver? Like, do you guys have one house that, like, where you know you're going to go jam at. <laughs> Probably Nate's house. <laughs> More than likely my house, but it, it has varied over the years. Um, like my house has always been open for it, but <clears throat> we jammed in Colton's. Colton lived in this place in the south in there with a buddy, and we jam in his garage there. We jam at Danny's parents' house back in the day, Scott's parents' house. and So we've, we've been around, been around the block. <laughs> If you could, if you guys could do any cover of a old song, what would it be? Oh, it's a good one. So many. Uh, and you have to say the same thing, of course. <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. One thing we've been thinking about for a while, and we're just trying to start working on a little bit, is Chop Suey by System of a Down. So we've been we've had that one on the. It's been on our covers list for since we've in advance so hopefully it'll happen eventually yeah i don't know if i know chop suey but i'm gonna mm -hmm. listen to that after this <laughs> and imagine yeah. playing it you guys should <laughs> dance to chop suey there you go yeah. nice. something. you're definitely <laughs> trying to create more mosh pits and more <laughs> you're working on it slowly yeah yeah <laughs> that'd be a good name for your next album chop suey chop <laughs> <Suey. laughs> um all right, you guys. Well, I just want to say that, um, first of all, it's been amazing listening to your music over the last six months. And um, I can't wait to hear more. And Stanton, thank you for making this all happen, putting this all together and making us all actors all of a sudden. <laughs> we're all uh, 
we're all film film people now. And Melody, thank you for being my friend and a beautiful dancer. <laughs> And um, and I want I want to thank Leticia Loya who uh, underwrit underwrote is that underwrote underwrote, yeah. underwrote uh, in good company for us and um, and now I feel like I, I wrote this down and now you get the first look of the series finale and uh, the series finale is Ballad of Janowski so um, it's been great talking to you guys and. Uh, I hope to see you on stage one of these days. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Yeah, thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure watching you guys dance to our music. And Stanton, thank you for coming up with the uh, the idea to do it. And well, thank you guys. It's been an inspiration. You you got us through. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. incredible. Right here's Ballad of Janowski, and somehow it's going to start. <laughs> <laughs>
Na 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 na